so good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Juliana Sanchez. Um, I think it's easier for you to call me Juliana. Um, yeah, it's a shame I don't speak uh, Portuguese. You think it's so easy, but it's, uh, at the same time, it's so difficult. So I'll give my lecture in English. Um, today, I just want to share with you the experience I've had in this company. I'm the uh, market, digital marketing and e-commerce manager for this fashion retailer in Colombia. Um, I've been in this company for around almost two years. Um, and I had the honor to um, launch the e-commerce site. Uh, I want to share with you this experience because I think it's going to be like inspiration or it's going to be helpful for most of you that are in this path or launching, at launching an e-commerce or that are already there but maybe haven't um, figured out how to do it better. Uh, we have had um, amazing results after our first year, and this is what I'm about to share with you, so um, I hope this will be useful for you. So, as I was telling you, in 2015, I received a phone call from a well-known fashion retailer in Colombia with that 2016 challenge, launch their e-commerce channel. And yes, of course, this is a huge challenge. Um, once I heard of this, I started to uh, get, gather some information about the brand. And um, I want to share with you uh, some of the information of the brand, of the brand in Colombia, uh, as well to give you some context. So, uh, Vélez is a family company that's been for almost 31 years in the market. It has high-end leather products, is a producer and is a retailer. Uh, we already have more than 260 stores in Colombia, and as well, we're present in other five countries, Mexico, Peru, Panama, Guatemala, and Costa Rica. We have more than 5.5 thousand direct and indirect employees. Uh, last year, sales for the offline uh, world were $120 billion. Um, in a year-to-year -year basis, compared to 2015 with uh, 2016, um, they grew 16% and they are at the top 100 companies in Colombia. So after all this information I gathered, um, I say, show, yeah. Why not? Why not to take this challenge? So, um, the main challenges I faced uh, for this brand, the, main of the, the first of it was the, their target, because it was a niche market. They have high-priced, handmade products. Um, that's why they have long production cycles. Um, as well, once I entered the company, I found out that they didn't take any photos of our, uh, final, the, the final product. They didn't record the product's attributes in their ERP. Technical issue. Oh, okay. Um, they have more than uh, their average customer in, a, in the offline stores are, is 45 plus. Um, they didn't have any digital marketing at all. They had social networks, but they just opened them like to be there, but they didn't make like any strategic efforts at all. They didn't have BI, that is business intelligence. Um, in Colombia, the country, we're facing as well a tense country situation, as I'm aware you're uh, dealing with the same thing here in Brazil. Um, I think most of you know that we recently signed a peace agreement. Um, the, uh, uh, the actual uh, president has around 90% of disapproval. Um, we have so corruption and we are, have a lot like huge taxes. So it's a very difficult country situation right now. The company as well. It has a fear that I think most of the companies have that is cannibalization of offline sales. 
Of course, this was like the first comment I got when I started to, to talk to the other uh, departments. Um, as well, they had this main need that was to catch up to competition, like fashion retailers that were at the uh, were selling online on, like already five years, so um, they were behind. And as well, there was this expectation from the board to be that the online sales had to be in the top five stores and become profitable at the third year of operations. Um, I'm sure as well you're already uh, familiar as well that for example Amazon, it took them around 10 years to become profitable. I, I heard Mercado Libre as well, uh, it took them like six to seven years, so it's something is not that easy to achieve, but they, uh, even with these kind of challenges, I said challenge accepted. So, um, I want to uh, share with you the um, first year um, results um, because I want to give you this context for after giving you like some advice how, um, about how to get there. So as I told you at the beginning, we've been only one year on air with the uh, e-commerce site. Uh, we've had amazing results that I want to share with you. And I hope uh, to give you like some advices so you can follow the same path. So um, after this first year, we were able to be the number one store in sales. As well, we were able to be number one store in gross margin. So this is good because not only are we selling, as well, we are um, dealing with a good margin. As well, we achieved 2.5 times the sales versus budget. So, of course, we brought 2.5 more sales that they were, than they were waiting for. Um, in five months, we achieved the beta of one year. So this is huge as well. Uh, we achieved and surpassed uh, the fifth month, the beta of the whole year. And in, the, in one year, after this first year, we were already profitable. So um, this is, of course, amazing results that I want to share with you. Um, and I know you, most of you are wondering, how did we do this? How was this possible? Because I know those are huge numbers. So I want to share with you today five basic strategies in order to make this possible. The first of all is people and culture. I'm sure you've all heard about this, and maybe it's cliche, but it's true. Like, uh, of course, once I got to this company, I had no team, I had no one. It was just by myself, so I had to hire people. Um, the first thing um, I asked, it was I needed dedicated people in main roles. Like, I've been in other companies before, and uh, most of them think that they can share resources. Like, um, you can share someone like sales, you can share it with the offline sales. And for me, at least, I am in my experience and my advice is that you shouldn't do that for the main roles. You need to keep your own people for sales, for marketing, and for client service. This is, like, for me, it was like one of my successful strategies. And of course, get permanent support from transversal areas. At the beginning, for example, IT must be 100% in. But after that, you just need that support. Uh, of course, about, you need support about for, from the accounting team and the legal team, for example. Um, and that can be uh, done through support. As well, I don't know if that happens in, in Brazil, but at least in Colombia, the universities Ha aren't um, like educating that much about digital marketing or e-commerce. They're just starting to do that. So I knew that in order to get good people, uh, I need them. I needed like someone that had the, like the basic stuff, like to know. They needed to know about the e-commerce and digital marketing. But I knew at the same time that I needed to train them. So first of all, I needed someone with passion and I needed someone that wanted to learn, 
you know, and that's something you have to know as well. You need to keep them trained, like constantly train them in order like, to get that successful team. Um, as well, one of the recommendations is to have in-house in the core activities and outsource those that you're not good at. Uh, as for ourselves, the uh, things we needed to outsource were the payment and the logistics. So for payment, right now we have an ally that is called PayU. I saw a stand over here. We work with them in Colombia. Um, we've had with them amazing results. And as well, we have two logistic allies. The first one is Coordinadora, that is like Correos here. And we have a lot, uh, someone else that is Logis Fashion, that they're the fulfillment. Um, for, they, for example, have as a client the Inditex group, like Bershka and Stradivari, so all those brands. Um, as well, there's something I recommend too, that is you need the involvement of the rest of a company. First, you have to uh, tell them that there is no cannibalization. Um, you have to ask them to no fear of change. Um, and you need to give them a reality check. Um, why no fear of change? Because once e-commerce is a reality, the company process are going to change. It doesn't matter if they think they don't belong to this process or to this sales channel. Everything is going to change. So you need to let that the people know, but um, like make it like a team effort. As well, you need a client culture because once you launch the e-commerce site, it's not about channels, it's about the client. And I'm going to get there uh, after, but it's something you have to take in mind. And as well, you need a digital culture. Um, at least for myself, when I got in this company, the company has 31 years, so um, I had to implement like these core values that were maybe in their minds, but it's something that they, they need to ad adopt. First, omnipresence, usability, opportunity, context, variety, personalization, and service. So my second advice is to have clear KPIs. So uh, the three KPIs you need your board to share with you is sales, gross margin, and EBITDA. The, uh, there's the four KPI that you need, that is average sales ticket, that one you can get from your offline stores. It's always around like 15, 20% more than offline stores, so that's something you can get out of it. And after that, with all those four KPIs, you can get your own conversion rates, orders, and visits. That's something you get out of all the, the uh, first four KPIs. And that's something that's going to be unique for the sales channel. The KPIs must be aligned to the board's expectation. And I say this because once I, once I entered this company, there was like the financial uh, manager with these uh, kind of uh, expectations from the channel, and then the inventory manager with all other expectations. So you need them to get aligned and to like everybody have the same KPIs in mind because it's something, it's very important that the, someone isn't expecting something different um, because it, it's a team effort, so everybody needs to be on board. Of course, the KPIs are only achievable if you, they're supported with a well-planned inventory. As far for ourselves, I recommend to have your own inventory, at least at the beginning, um, because you need that, uh, you, you need to move fast. It's a dynamic um, channel. So this is something that's going to be uh, only possible if, if you have your own inventory. You must identify channels role. And I say this because some channels might be a discount channel. Some of them can be only new collections channel. And others could be, for example, like to have exclusive products that they don't have in offline stores. So you need to get that clear. And as well, you must have shared and exclusive price and marketing strategies. And with that, I mean that if you have offline, like uh, physical stores, 
you need to have everything they have on their, in their stores because the, the client is expecting to find everything wherever you are. But as well, as it is a dynamic channel, you need to have your own strategies. So for example, you have Cyber Monday. There's already a Green Monday. Um, but you can create as well your own activity. So make sure that happens in, in order to keep your clients interested and keep them coming. The third advice is marketing budget with a purpose. I think one of the best things about um, e-commerce is that um, most of their expenses are variable. So uh, you want to keep that way. And that's why I recommend you to have the marketing budget as a percentage of your sales. Um, and as well, you need to have the marketing behind an, uh, like the sales plan. Because of course, um, the marketing strategies need to um, make that sales possible. <clears throat> as well, you need um, to achieve that uh, sales through own and paid traffic sources. So your own, you have your own database. If you don't have it, get it. It's very important. Um, as well, you can use that, do that uh, through organic efforts, through your social networks, and um, as well through your offline stores, doing a blog. But with paid traffic sources, uh, in order to know in which traffic sources to be, you need to have a clear view of your client. So you need your demographics, psychographics, behavioral. And once you get to know your client, you know where he is and where does he like to be. And uh, in that way, you can find out um, which um, channels to invest. As well, I recommend you to have a loyalty program and CRM. This because your channel is only successful if you have loyal clients. Right now, at least for a fashion industry, like people is mostly all the time going for the cheapest option. Right now, maybe for the economic crisis we're having in Colombia, but if you give them something like interesting, this, this added value, they will keep coming and that will be your successful strategy. As well, you need your BI, your business intelligence. You need to have one single client and that's possible integrating all your data sources in order to anticipate their needs and create new needs. And what creates? Because once you gather uh, like, um, more information about your client and that will be possible through digital uh, traffic sources, you can find out what they're looking for and maybe create something you didn't have in your portfolio. As well, I recommend you, at least for us or any small to medium company, to invest your marketing budget in online, like digital um, efforts, and leave the, the offline marketing to the stores. And if you don't have offline stores, I recommend you to do it like 100% digital. And this is because um, it's cheaper, you can catch more audience, and you can measure as well your efforts and be able to only invest in those channels that allow, allow you to get the, um, the KPIs you're waiting for. Um, as well, I recommend you to always benchmark with um, local competition. I always keep an eye on my main competitors, but I want to be as the international leaders. And this means that I keep an eye because I want to know what they're doing, but I don't want to be like them. I want to be better. So that's why I'm always looking at what they're doing outside, like in the US, in Europe, so I can be like them. That, like, As you know, I think in, in Brazil, you're ahead of us as well, but um, the US, Europe, UK, they're like 20 years ahead of us. So that's something we want to take their best, the best practices, of course, for our advantage. And my other advice as well, to focus on mobile. Uh, in Latin America, the average of uh, sales from a mobile are 20% of the sales come from mobile. For our company, it's 40% of the 
on a regular day, but for our bigger events, as for example, Cyber Monday or Black Friday, it gets uh, up to 60% of our sales come from mobile. So this is very huge for us. Um, and how do you achieve this? You have to uh, make a decision if you have a responsive site, if you have a mobile site, or if you have a, an app. As far as uh, for Colombia goes, um, we Colombians do not download apps. Like we have the basic apps, we have WhatsApp, we have Facebook, we have Facebook Messenger, we have Instagram, but that's it. Like we Colombians do not download apps, and that's why that's, um, you don't want to invest in something that is, isn't going to be used. There's something now that is called PWA. Uh, we're wondering, like we want to go there, we don't have it yet but I think is one of the, of the best solutions, is progressive web applications, and I recommend it to you to read it because I think it's going to be the next great thing. The fourth recommendation is measurement, feedback, and improvement. I think one of the best things you can do is to do non-stop follow-up. Every day, every week, every month. I even do it when I have the chance, every hour, I know every hour with like the KPIs, how they're going, how they must be. Um, you have to follow up and measure your KPIs, your budget, your team's performance, your processes performance, and of course the market, the country's performance. And as well, you need to constantly measure your, your allies. As for us, is the logistics gateway, an agency because, of course, nothing is well done if not everybody is on board with this. You need to generate personalized reports. Um, there are a lot of analytics. Of course, you know Google Analytics. There's Facebook Analytics. Uh, as well, our pla e-commerce platform has its own analytics. So get them all together in order to have personalized reports, dashboards that will, be, that will make you decisions even easier. And um, digital is always evolving, so you must evolve at the same pace. And I say this because maybe today um, you're measuring this indicator or you're using this traffic source, uh, but like in six months you won't be useful because something new came up. So you need to make sure you're always studying what's out there so you integrate it in your efforts. And now, the fifth recommendation is to make that decision of your e-commerce platform. We decided for Vitex. Yes, they are Brazilian. Um, this is a decision we made after um, many months thinking about it, and I'm going to share with you why we chose them. First of all, for me, I think you must get an ally. You don't need a software. Like software, there are many out there. I don't want to say names, but um, we um, investigated like a lot of them. We sat with a lot, a lot of them. Um, there are many solutions, great solutions out there, but um, you need someone that's going to be there constantly for you because uh, you're going to need them you're gonna need their support in order to be successful. So um, give you, I'm giving you the key decision factors in which, we, uh, in which we took our decision. First of all, they're software as a service. I don't know if you most all of you know what this means, but this means that you don't need to buy like the, the whole software. You just like paying for a service. And they're open API, they're B2C, they're B2B. They, add, they have native integrations with microplaces. They're omnichannel. They have smart checkout. They're PCI compliant. They have Amazon warehouse system. So this is like the key main decision factors we saw with them. So we saw that were interesting and aligned with our expectations. As well for the ROI, because um, they are a percentage. We pay them a percentage out of our sales. So this keeps the, this good because, I, as I was telling you before, in most of your expenses, you want to keep them variable. So as well, this worked for us. 
And as well, because it was a key partner to our current need, that is e-commerce, but they were mainly our key partner for our real future, that is omnichannel. Um, with this, I want to open another um, discussion about being omnichannel. And what, I'm sure maybe you're wondering, why omnichannel? And yes, like you want to be omnichannel because today we're building an e-commerce, but only for tomorrow to have an omnichannel experience. When I was hired by this company to start their e-commerce site, they only, I was only asked to uh, launch this e-commerce site, but for me, um, the e-commerce site is only the first step to the real business here that is omnichannel. And why um, I'm saying this is that because you need, um, for the client, it isn't about channels anymore. It is about us as retailers being there everywhere they are. So um, I'm gonna give you like a simple explanation of omnichannel. I'm sure you all know about this, but it's just to make it easier. Uh, single channel is when you only sell, for example, you only have your store, or you only sell through Instagram, or you only have your e-commerce site. So the client doesn't have a lot of options, just one. So they buy from you from this only channel. Multi-channel is when you have your physical store and you have as well your Instagram account profile. And you can buy, uh, the, your clients can buy from you from both uh, channels. But when they go to your store, your physical store is a completely different Exp like experience than for the one you're giving in Instagram. So for the client, it's like if they're buying for two different, from two different brands, okay? And the omni-channel, what is this? So as you can see in, in, in this image, um, I'll give you an example so you can understand what omni-channel is. For example, I'm, it, I'm at my office, I'm finishing my journey, but I started to look up something for, through the internet, and I saw something on this site, on uh, at this fashion brand, and I started to buy something, and then added like a pair of jeans, and they're already in my basket. I suddenly have to leave to my house, so I stop my purchase there, I go to my car, and then I'm stuck on the, the traffic jam, okay? So I say, I, I want to take advantage of this time and I want to keep purchasing through my mobile. So I keep purchasing. And the gene that I, I added on my desktop, it is as well now in my, on my mobile. So the brand already knew that the, the Juliana that was buying at the desktop is now at her mobile. It's the same client. So I have these jeans and now I add a um, pair of shoes. And I have to stop buying as well this time because um, the, uh, the traffic started to move, so I have to go to my house and I start, and I start driving. But I don't want to uh, lose this um, purchase, so I call to, to this uh, number that the brand offers, and I want to uh, finish my, uh, my purchase. I tell them that I, had, uh, I have a, a basket that I want to pay and they know what the items I see. They see the, the jeans, they see the shoes, and they only ask me for the payment information. They close the sale, I pay, and I receive them next day at my house. So for me, as a retailer, I offer three different channels. But for the client, it's the same brand. It's just one brand. That's omnichannel. So um, I want to share with you what are the plans for us, uh, for as far as Omnichannel goes for us right now. Uh, right now we want to start doing store pickup. As I told you, we are only one year old, so this is something we're working on. First, we want to do store pickup is to buy from our e-commerce, pick it up at our physical stores. We're working on store payment which means you can pick 
the product out of our e-commerce e but you're going to pay for it at our stores, physical stores, but you get delivered the product to your house. We're working as well on store selling e-commerce inventory, which means the stores, the physical stores, have a digital like um, catalog. And this means if a client goes to one of my physical stores and um, the size they were looking for, it, it isn't available anymore, it's out of stock, um, the uh, sales agent will buy it from their phone or an iPad. The uh, client will pay it at the store and it will, he will get it shipped to his house. So the uh, sale isn't lost. We're planning as well for e-commerce selling store inventory. And that was, I was telling you at the beginning, that at the beginning you need to have your own inventory, but at the end it's going to be all the same. Because in, uh, in the e-commerce, I want to show the inventory my stores have. So of course, I will have more variety, more units, and I will start helping the stores to sell their own inventory, so to circulate inventory, which is good for any brand. And of course, in this way, stores will start loving you and um, they will lose this fear of cannibalization. Of course, as well, the phone sales, um, you need to have them. As I was telling you in my example, it's something very uh, important to have. It's complementary to the e-commerce and offline stores. Uh, the mobile e-commerce, as I was telling you, mobile is a completely different thing from desktop and you need to have your own mobile experience. So this is something you, va you want to invest in. Um, as well, the marketplaces. You no longer sell uh, through your e-commerce site. You want to sell through other e-commerce sites. This is always something good. So you need to uh, do that in order to be present in your own country to reach new audiences, but as well maybe to go internationally through other marketplaces. As well, B2B, we're working on this because we already are B2B, but we don't have like this technological um, tool to help the sales agent to achieve this. So we're working on this so they can uh, have like the same e-commerce experience to offer to their institutional clients. International shipping, of course, not only through marketplace, but as well opening our own e-commerce sites and digital catalogs, which means that we're working on having iPads or mobile phones or computers in shopping malls, offices, or anywhere. Like if you're at a forum, at a conference, you can have your own spaces and the client, like a self-service kind of thing, they can buy your products. So this only is possible if you have this that is a single client, as I was telling you, it's not omnichannel, it's not about channels anymore. It's about having one client, it, he, it doesn't matter where he buys you from, for the client it's just one brand. Remember that the omnichannel uh, term is just for us as retailers, but for the client, they have no idea what we're talking about. And this is possible through data, through analytics, gather all your data um, sources together so you know where Juliana is shopping, who is she when she's on, um, on the mobile site, on the e-commerce desktop, on your social networks. You need to know that she's the same person wherever she is. So in conclusion, a retailer's goal shouldn't be just e-commerce. The final goal is the omnichannel experience. Um, so don't wait to be there and start making things happen. So, Thank you very much. Obrigada. If you have any questions, I think we are out of time. <laughs> <laughs>